So here we find that yes, this idea of elaboration, of deep processing through teaching others, does seem to boost memory and comprehension. But it only seems to really be required once learning information becomes complex. When things are easy to understand and grasp, you might not need these deeper techniques. Now why might this be? Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now the article I've selected this week is called Learning by Explaining Orally or in Written Form by Jacob and colleagues. Now to understand this paper, we have to wrap our heads around the concept of depth of processing. Now whenever we learn anything new, there's a ton of things we could be focused on while we're learning that stuff. For instance, let's say I gave you a bunch of words and I said I want you to memorize these words. You could focus on the letters of the words, you could focus on the sounds of the words, you could focus on the definitions of the words, you could turn them into a story focus on the linkage. There are dozens of ways you can angle your thinking about those words to try and learn them. And it turns out that the deeper your processing, the better your memory and deeper your comprehension. So going back to those words, if you only focus on say the sounds of the words, you're gonna do a lot worse in a quiz later than if you focused on say the definition of the words or combining the words into a coherent story. So the deeper our focus, the deeper our mental processing, the better our learning and comprehension. Now why does this matter? Well, it turns out a great technique to ensure kids are focusing on deep processing, deep material, is to have them teach somebody else. Whenever an individual has to present or teach information to other people, it forces them to think deeply about the concepts they're discussing, how they all link together, how the story fits together, and that act of teaching, of organizing those ideas in a way that I can pass it on to somebody else, serves as my deep processing. If I can teach something, I understand it more deeply than if I simply memorize it or look at it. So enter this paper. What these authors wanted to figure out was do you have to orally teach somebody or can you textually write something out and have that same beneficial learning impact? So what these researchers did is they had students read two different texts. One we're gonna call low complexity and one high complexity. And after the kids read these different texts, they broke them into three groups. So group one simply spent time recalling as much information as they could from the text they just read. Group two was instructed they would have to teach somebody else this material but through written form. So they were given five minutes to write out everything they learned in a way that somebody else could learn from. And group three was told they would have to teach somebody else this material orally. So they were given five minutes to prepare a verbal speech on how they would teach their reading to somebody else. And after all this work, either the, the recall, the writing, or the teaching, everyone was given a deep comprehension test to see what they remembered and what they could infer from what they read. What did they find out? When it came to the low complexity text, each group performed about the same. They were all able to answer about three out of six questions correctly. But when it came to the high complexity text, the kids in the recall group were able to answer 2.25 out of six questions correctly, while the kids in the written group were able to answer about 2.5 questions out of six correctly, so about a 10% gain from the pure recall group, while the kids in the oral explanation group were able to answer about three out of six questions correct, so about a 30% gain from the pure recall group. So here we find that yes, this idea of elaboration, of deep processing through teaching others, does seem to boost memory and comprehension, but it only seems to really be required once learning information becomes complex. When things are easy to understand and grasp, you might not need these deeper techniques, just simply reading is fine. But these different depths of processing techniques aren't the same. It seems like orally presenting to somebody seems to be a little stronger than writing. Now, why might this be? Well, it turns out these researchers dug deep and what they found was that when students were orally teaching material, they used a lot more personal references, words like I, me, you, ours, whereas the writing summaries seem to exclude these social aspects. Furthermore, during the oral, there was a lot more concepts hit. On average, kids would hit about 25 concepts, while during the writing, they'd only hit about 18 concepts of the reading. So what these researchers suggest is that there is a social influence on that learning. When I know there's going to be a social presence during my teaching, I make it more self-referential and I put a little more effort into making it understandable for the people who are going to be listening. So this social aspect seems to actually increase the effort students put into the work, which increases the depth of processing, which increases the memory and comprehension. So cool, let's bring this back now to us. What does this mean for us as teachers? Well, we know things like retrieval practice are really good for learning and memory. How do we start to combine these things? So how do we get kids to start doing retrieval recall practice while embedding this teaching, this deeper processing into it? So maybe instead of kids quizzing each other, they're teaching each other, they're writing back and forth to one another. But this leads to a very interesting point that some kids hate presenting to other kids. 
Luckily, it turns out that doesn't really seem to matter. So long as a kid makes a video presentation that they believe somebody else will be watching, we seem to get that same boost of memory and comprehension without any of the pressure of having other people present. I think another interesting thing to consider then is feedback, is a lot of the time we have students write ideas out we get them, we read them, we offer feedback. That usually takes a lot of time, a couple of days, at which point we're in different thoughts. But when a kid is orally presenting, when they're discussing things with us, we can begin to start to give them feedback on the fly. We can start to give ideas and see how they react, respond, and adapt in the moment. So this idea of how do we start to bring this oral description more into the learning and the assessment within our classrooms. And the final thing I want to point out here, which I thought, thought was pretty neat, was these researchers asked the different groups at the end of the study, how well did you think you did? How much did you think you learned from your reading using your different techniques? And it turns out kids who orally presented information were far more accurate in judging their learning and understanding than the kids in either the, the written or the recall group. So just something for us to keep in mind, this idea of metacognitive awareness. We can always be asking our kids, how well do you think you're getting this? And then compare it to their actual performance to see where we're getting these discrepancies and maybe what we can focus on in the future. So thank you all so much for watching that. I hope you enjoyed and got something out of it. Uh, if you like what you watch, if you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe below, it'll make sure more people get a chance to see this on YouTube. And our question for this week will be this. What do you think on the difference between writing and presenting orally? Which resonates and has worked better for you and your students in the past? And maybe how you apply these techniques in your classroom. And then that'll just get the discussion going and we can start going from there. So I hope you all are well. Have a great one. I'll see you soon. Bye y'all.